Hello everybody, this is Michael Files Sage checking in here and today I wanted to talk about, uh, well, I wanted to make a sequel to an episode of a series, namely the series being the Species Talk series and the first episode on that series, which is the next big thing in mycology. Now in that episode, I talked about how the next big thing that I foresee will be in mycology all those months ago will be, all, you know, people moving on to different species. Because remember, if you said, if you remember in that video, I was talking about how there's a whole new generation over the last couple of years who've gotten into this hobby, into the mushroom world, and they are first starting out with cubes. You know, first they're just trying to get good yields, uh, and then eventually, now as you see, people are going crazy about you know cube crosses and all this stuff. And I said in that video, yeah, they're going crazy about it, but eventually they're going to dis suddenly discover, well, it's not really discover, but they personally will discover that there's actually different species out there. And then they're going to try to do the same thing. And that's that's the next thing. Well, it's already happening, guys, as I said. Um, you know, so the, the mainstream adoption of species that I foresee happened when Gordo Tech made his uh, pan cyan video, okay? Um, and again, as I say in, the, in that original episode, this is nothing new to those in the know, those who were on the Esmeri or those who uh, just know like a more broad history of this whole topic, like myself. <laughs> and uh, so, so it's really nothing new, but it's kind of funny how, you know, this new generation is like, oh my God, there's different species. Oh. And uh, well, it, that's exactly what's happening. So Gordo Tech uh, released his video. And now people are going crazy about pan science. And, and you know, just uh, it's very predictable. Uh, you know, it's like pan science is the only other species that exists, basically, for most people. It's, it's just pan science because of that hype. Uh, but if they know any better, then they would realize that there's actually species that are considered far more sacred, uh, offer far uh, more deep experiences that many would argue is the case uh, rather than pan science. Pan signs are very potent. They, they are better than cubes for sure. But I, I think it's, it, it's, just the, it's just the flavor of the month, let's say, right? It's just, but the people will eventually realize that, oh, okay, there's actually other species other than pan signs and all that. Right now, it's all about potency, you know, that's what, that's, the main thing they're talking about but the next thing is uh once they go to species right they will realize eventually realize that there's actually characters per species you know there's a different entourage effect for each species and that's the next thing you know because right now they're all going crazy about potency but eventually they'll realize oh there's actually you know how about quality over quantity that's kind of important as well and that's my personal stance and i think that's eventually where we're going to move to right now they're all going crazy about pan science but there's going to be a certain section of that population who will perhaps move to for example the mexicana varieties uh or whatever so uh basically what i wanted to talk about this is particularly about pan science uh, and how how this is going to go, basically. How So first of all, Gordo Tech released his video. He had a setup where he had like a, uh, you know, like an ultrasonic mister going down into a bathtub, which is timed. Uh, I, I, I think there was also a fan. But anyways, it's basically just sort of like a greenhouse setup without a greenhouse. So... Uh, basically, uh, that, that got people interested into it, right? They, it, that video introduced them to the idea of pasteurization uh, of uh, nutritious substrates. You know, it introduced them to a setup other than a tub setup, etc. It, it, it introduced them to the idea of a different species offering perhaps different experiences and is far more potent, right? And to me, this was always obvious because I knew that it's not just psilocybin is psilocybin is psilocybin. It's not. You know, and I never understood the people who said it was because, okay, so maybe, maybe you're right, but how could you say that that is for sure correct? Because as you know, right, which I'm assuming they're, they're all about that science, right? So I'm assuming because it's usually those types of people who say that, oh, you know, there's no difference. It's just psilocybin. Okay. Well, you know, uh, you, you should understand then that we don't have much science on this stuff. Right, we we're just discovering things constantly. R recently, we've discovered about beta carbolines, MAOIs in mushrooms that will certainly affect the experience. Right, uh, or people will say, oh, you know, like for example, oh, like baocystin, you know, it's basically uh, ten times as weak as psilocybin, and it's just like, but we really can't say. You know, there's just not been much tests done. It's not all just analogs of psilocin. Uh, or not like pro drugs of psilocin. You know, we, we just can't say if it's either one way or another. All I can speak from is experience, and many people who have actually tried different species will 
attest to this, that there is most certainly a difference between species. It's, it's like no contest. Uh, and I also find that people who say that it's just psilocybin have never, never tried different species. They've only tried cubes. They've only grown like, you know, a bunch of cubes. It's, it's, it's no comparison. You know, I personally have tried many different species and there is most certainly different characteristics. I mean, look at weed. There's, you know, entourage effect is a real thing. Uh, for example, if you take like limonene on its own, it might not have much effect, but if you take it with THC and all the other cannabinoids, it's gonna, it's, it, it will have an effect. Basically, I digress. So I was talking about Gordotech, right? Uh, so, so that was the first step, right? Him and his setup where all you need is like a bathtub or like a kiddie pool and, and an ultrasonic mister and all this, a uh, humidifier and all this. Uh, so the next step is, uh, well, it's like me, my channel. What am I doing with the poo cakes? I want to just simplify it so you don't even need to have all that. I want to make these species. My, one of my primary goals with mycophilia since the very beginning was all about different species and how to make them easier to grow at home without having to invest in, in a, a greenhouse setup or you know having to sacrifice your bathtub. I, I want to make it easier and I, I believe that I can and I am working on it and I will make it easier. Now, I'm not talking about how to optimize your yield of this particular species in general because make no mistake, the best setup for pans in general is to have a well dialed in greenhouse type setup or some kind of automated setup. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about personal use amounts and all this stuff, you know, that's that's what I uh, am interested in because because I want to, the most people to be able to access this medicine. I want the most people to be able to act. And guess what? Most people just don't or are, are not. Because like, okay, so we're in this like mushroom community, right? And and the people who are subscribed to me or uh, not all of them, but a lot of them uh, or other channels, you know, within this mycosphere on YouTube are, are very, very interested in the hobby itself. Not all of them, but a lot of them are, and they're very into the hobby. And me, I'm, I've always seen myself as sort of a, uh, a drive-by mycologist in the sense that um, I'm, I'm like, my, it's interesting as stuff, but that's not the primary point for me. The primary point is I look at it as holistically as possible. You know, I'm just not all about, ooh, how to get 150% the best, you know, potential growth setup that I can get and the best yield that I could get with it. I, you know, um, like I don't want to get shitty yields, but I want to just do the best with the simplest uh, possible way, right? Do the best, like a cost benefit basically. And I think that's what most people are interested in outside of this very niche mushroom cultivation community. And I think that's really what will help people, you know, access this medicine. So that's my main interest. So that's why I'm making it simpler. But anyways, in this vein of making it simpler, now other people are getting into this. And uh, I will uh, basically predict that the next thing is going to be uh, pan species, Panalus cyanus, you know, Pan Panalus bisporus, uh, Cambodogenensis, all these pan species uh, in basically like cubensis setups, like like in tubs, right? In monotubs or in shoe boxes, etc. That is going to be the next big thing. Um, following the different species, this is going to be the first step. And and I want to talk about the history of Penelis in tubs because I don't want anybody to come along and claim credit for it or anything because that's the problem with YouTube. You know, people will just take text and just claim it as their own, not give credit where credit is due at the very minimum. You know, I always give credit in my videos of where I got these ideas, tell you the name of the person that made these texts. Uh, but but on YouTube, like it's like they're like pirates. They, they, they'll just you know, take claim credit. So I just wanted to set the record straight before this big movement occurs. And it will occur, I guarantee you. Okay, future listeners, am I right or am I right? <laughs> so basically, uh, Penelis and Monotubs was basically made popular by a shroomery member called Baba Yaga, right? And he has a now famous thread on the shroomery with over 20, like 25 plus pages right now uh, of Penelis and monotubes. And within that thread, there's also somebody who did it in a shoebox, in an unmodified shoebox, you know, a guy called Southerner. I've read through the whole post, right? I do a lot of research on this stuff. And uh, basically, he, he's got it dialed in. Baba Yaga has got it dialed in. He's the one that brought this idea to the people. Okay, he, he's the one that did the hard work over years to get this setup going. So much respect to Baba Yaga. Okay, and uh, so that's basically the origin of Penelis and Monotubs. Uh, now, what's going to be the next step? 
the next step is people are going to try to grow Penelis without any dung because it's a species that needs dung, right? Traditionally. I mean, you could grow them on, for example, hay, but hay is still a nutritious substrate. So the next step is to try to get them to grow on core or, or CVG or just core verm, you know, whatever, non-nutritious. And that's going to be the next step. And I also wanted to mention that this has also been worked on by Baba Yaga and also other members on the shroomery. And also uh, the, the, another thing that people are going to try to go for is to, to fruit these species without a casing layer because currently they need a casing layer. So the next thing is without a casing layer and also Baba Yaga is also working on that as well and has some results with that. Uh, after a Penelis and monotubs. So people are going to start trying to do it just on core and monotubs next rather than use dung and monotubs. And, uh, and this has already been done over the decades. People, ha people know that, or, or at least the people in the know, know that you can grow Penelis species with core. It, it's not a new thing. You know, people have been at this for a long, long time, way before you or myself, okay, for decades, right? Remember, guys, you could buy all these species in shops in Holland. There were literally legal industries. There were literally like, like sort of like legal cannabis, right? So there, there's like cannabis corporations, factories, uh, you know, like green, like professional commercial greenhouses and stuff. This was the same with mushrooms, right? You guys got to remember this for decades. This was the industry. This was a legal industry. And as it was a legal industry, there's a lot of money to be made. So, so the growers were not fucking around. They had the best genetics, okay? They had the best setups of the time. Uh, they had millions and millions and millions of dollars invested in these, in their operations. So it's, it's like, it's sort of like we're rediscovering it in a sense, at least in the North American sphere. Uh, it's like, there, I find there's not a lot of cross-fertilization and I'm trying to incorporate a lot of cross-fertilization in all of my techniques and my grows, okay? Because it's just, because I see the whole scope of it. I see a much wider scope than I think most people. No, not I think, it's true, right? And because I've been at this for a long time and this has been my, my basically what I've dedicated my entire adult life to. So uh, it, it is very much... I'm very much passionate about this stuff. So basically people have been at this for a long, 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 long time. And the things that people think are new is because they're just not very familiar with uh, all the previous knowledge, right? Um, and that is just limiting yourself, I believe, because you got to learn from history, you know, otherwise you're just deemed to, doomed to repeat yourself. Uh, so anyways, I, I'm, I'm, I digress, right? I've been digressing for a while now, but basically in short, Penelis and Monotubs was done by Baba Yaga. He was the pioneer. He was the one that made this tech doable and brought uh, the masses attention to it. Not that he was the first one to do it in a tub or anything because there have been uh, others, for example, Stone Sun from the Shroomery, right? He had a just as easy as Cube series that, series that he released a, a, a a tech for Penelis on, which he grows in a modified shoebox, but no fans, nothing, and he was successful, right? This this kind of thing has been done for a long time, guys. Don't be so arrogant to think that you're the first one to do it, or or the the first like do your research and understand that there is a rich history to it, and it is a fascinating history, and I believe it deserves to be told, especially as it is becoming more and more mainstream. There's going to be a lot of people who want to profit from it, who don't really care, just jumping on the so-called. Uh, psychedelic renaissance and I just as somebody who who was there you know early earlier on you know at least a decade before I've been in this you know deeply entrenched I've seen the changes you know over the years and it's happening before my eyes and I'm very passionate about it and I have a lot to say about it so that's why I'm making these videos uh, because nobody else is speaking about this right nobody else so uh, yeah basically Penelis and monotops has been done next thing that's gonna be the next big thing, right? Penelis species and Penelis species in monotubs in particular. And the next step after that will be growing Penelis on core or CVG. Plus bonus points if you do it without a casing layer. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I just wanted to say that this stuff has already been done. You could go on Shroomery posts, go back you know, over 10 years and you will find posts of people growing Penelis uh, species with just core. And in tubs and in shoe boxes, as you guys just saw. It's been done. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Michael File Sage, checking out.